following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today on 94.1 FM WNBU, as well as Cable TV 10 in New Bern, North Carolina. We also welcome our viewers and listeners streaming from our website, www.dlblaine.com. We hope you uh, enjoy today's show. We've got a lot of great things in store for you. As always, we welcome our viewers and listeners' comments, questions that you have on the show, many ways to get in touch with us. Of course, you can email us. Our, our email is allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. And you can telephone us, area code 252-633-0107. And probably the most convenient for everybody, the ubiquitous Internet, you can just go to our website, www.dlblaine.com and there's a big contact us button you can just click on that and uh, tell us what you're thinking comments questions topics you'd like to uh, us to cover on the show while you're there on the website go ahead and look around you'll find some information about myself as well as my firm and our knowledge center which I'm very proud of we have years and years worth of uh, video and audio recordings of all these shows we also have years and years worth of articles that I've written and have been published in various places. So a really a good resource. Uh, there's a search button. You just type in what you're looking for. Say, um, I don't know, gold or uh, stocks. Stocks will probably bring up a lot of uh, results. But anyway, type in what you're looking for, and it'll bring up every article, every TV show, every radio show. We've tried to put keywords in there to help you uh, zero in on what you're looking for. But anyway, check that out. Uh, www.dlblaine.com. Okay, today is uh, October the 9th, 2012, and I thought it would be interesting to look back today that five years ago, now I realize some of you will be listening to this later, uh, but today is the five-year anniversary of the market high back in 2007. The S&P 500 closed at 1565 and the Dow closed at 14,164. And today the S&P is, I think, 1,460, 1,470, something like that. Um, so this was October of 2007. And within a year, each of those markets had lost at least 35% and then ultimately lost uh, more than 50%, the S&P 500 declining 54% uh, before, by March of 2009. Uh, before it started to recover. So October 2007 reached the high, and then March of 2009 finally reached a low, 54% below where it started. Now, uh, a, major, you know, a good percentage of those losses have since been recovered, but I thought it would be useful to take a look at um, you know, what, what we have learned since then and what investors can do um, moving forward. And I think the first thing to realize is that, you know, opportunity is everywhere, um, and that there are things that throughout that time period have made money, um, you know, other asset classes such as uh, gold and long-term treasuries. I think one of the big lessons of this, one of the problems with investing too is I don't, we want to look for timeless lessons and not maybe specific investments that say, oh, well, this XYZ stock did fine, so the next time this happens, I'm going to invest in that. It's typically not the way it happens, but there are some timeless principles. And number one is that high quality U.S. Treasury bonds, as well as high quality U.S. corporate bonds, uh, were the place to be, and they continue. Uh, whenever the stock market goes down, they tend to rise. And so we want you to remain diversified. In fact, if you look at um, a rather aggressive portfolio of, say, 70% stock, 30% bonds purchased five years ago, would actually be 11% higher today. Now, that's not a huge return. I'm, you know, nothing to <laughs> retire on. But the reality is, is much better than if you had 100% 
uh, stock. Number two is that no matter how bad things are, there are opportunities. And if you are truly a long-term investor, you paradoxically should welcome these declines as a time period to purchase uh, investments at a low price. Now, we advocate using uh, broad-based exchange-traded funds or, or mutual funds. Um, we don't do a lot of individual stock picking anymore. There's, a not, there's not a lot of value to be had in that space anymore. Um, but purchasing you know, market indexes through ETFs or mutual funds at these lows has turned out to be uh, very profitable. Now, the one thing that um, I hear all the time is, oh, yeah, you know, I got out of the market in 2007. Oh, yeah, I bought in at, you know, 2009. The reality is there's not too many people out there that have done that. And so when you're looking at your overall investment plan, we have a great data point uh, of the 18 months between October 2007 and March 2009. And how you reacted during that period, you know, did you just turn the TV off? Did you just not open your statements and sort of muddled through it? Or did you panic? You know, did you sell out at a low? You know, how you reacted to that, right or wrong, is a very important piece of information. And when you're looking to the future, either by yourself or working with an advisor, that's very important that you realize how you reacted. You know, if you are the per type of person that tends to sell out at the bottom, well, we need to design a portfolio that will prevent you from doing that. Maybe you have a much smaller percentage of stocks in the portfolio. Um, maybe you have a predetermined threshold. Now, keep in mind, uh, uh, some people do this. They say, well, if my portfolio goes down 10%, you know, I'm getting out. Um, uh, you know, there are better ways to manage risk than that, but let's say that is your way. The problem becomes, okay, well, then when do you rebuild your portfolio? And, and when do you rebuild, uh, you know, get back into the, to the market? Um, so I think one of the important lessons of this time period is that the money is made sort of in the middle, and these extremes of high or low uh, are passing, you know, periods of time that, that do pass away after a while. The, the past five years, or not past five years, but since March of 2009, have been a relatively robust uh, returns. And so if you having excess money available, consistently saving, if you're consistently saving uh, through some sort of program, you automatically sort of are able to buy in at the lows. People that maintain some sort of reserve uh, are able to take advantage of these periods when people are panicking. And history has shown that, that it can be uh, a very fruitful time to purchase. Now, you want to make sure that um, that economy or the stock market is going to survive, but typically we see um, that when people are panicking in times of lows, it turns out to be a fairly decent um, time to purchase equities. Okay, so once again, today marks the five-year anniversary of the high of the stock market. We're just kind of reviewing some of the lessons, hopefully, that you learned uh, from the past five years of the, the markets declining 54% and subsequently rising. When we come back, we'll continue talking about this.